Cool, five o'clock here in Berlin, so let's uh, let's get started. So today what we're gonna do is, um, based off actually the workshop we did, or the, the talk we did last week, uh, we mentioned something called the Lightning Decision Jam. And uh, when we sort of you know said, hey guys, do you wanna learn a little bit more about this? We got a very, very strong response. So what we've decided to do today is give you an example of a Lightning Decision Jam in action um, actually applied to, to our, our company, Product Mastery. Um, so you can really see how we put this process into action within our company, uh, you know, rather than just re reading the theory or watching a tutorial video online. So for those that are new to the Lightning Decision Jam and are just in here because it sounded pretty exciting um, and new to them, a Lightning Decision Jam is essentially a way of moving from problem to solution within 60 minutes. It's sort of derived from something called the Design Sprint, which was Google, um, developed by uh, Google Ventures about six, seven years ago, and it's now being rolled out across all industries, all companies, you know, anything from Lego to McKinsey to IDEO, the sort of godfathers of, of design thinking, um, because it's so effective. So it's such an effective way of aligning your team, aligning stakeholders, avoiding all of these endless discussions where you're just running in circles and moving to a a prioritized actionable solution that is solving a specific problem within 60 minutes. So as I said, today we are we are gonna, uh oh, sorry, voice is cutting in and out. Deepak, could you just, I'll keep speaking. If there's the same problem, then uh, please comment again. Okay, so I've got the guys up here. Uh, yeah, just keep any anyone else any audio issues, please comment. Okay, awesome. Okay, so it's Deepak's internet. Awesome. Um, let me know if anyone else has audio issues as we go on with this. Looks okay, hopefully. Awesome. So I'm gonna into you go. Uh, sorry, just adjust. The... Okay, awesome. Okay, nice. Yep. Everyone else is fine. So audio is all good. Great. So I'm gonna introduce you to the guys we have over here. Guys, wave to them. <laughs> uh, time to be alive. This is so modern. Yeah, very, very modern. I'm not very good at. I don't use multi-screen ever, so I haven't bothered connecting them up. Anyway, so for people that don't know, I'm Henry CEO and founder of Product Mastery. On this, on uh, participating in the workshop, we all also have Felix, who is running growth at Product Mastery. And Hi. There he is in the background and um, to bring some different expertise to sort of really make this truly cross-functional. And, uh, you know, as we would apply it, if we have a larger team, we have Connor Diggin, who is Senior Data Scientist at Get Your Guide. Hello, everybody. And we've got um, Jesse Fan Fanmoeg, <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce for a second, um, who is UX designer, UX UI designer? UX UI, yeah. Yeah, UX UI at workstreams.ai, which is a very cool uh, tool that really merges Kanban boards and other task management tools with chat tools like Slack and Microsoft Teams. So we'll post links to these guys, um, uh, whatever, personal websites, company websites at the end if you want to learn more. So before we jump in, everyone can hear me, you guys can hear me, these guys can hear me. Seeing me doesn't matter quite so much, not so important. Great, so what we're gonna do next is start the actual lightning decision jam itself. So I'm gonna switch over to these guys visually just so I can connect with them on a, on a deeper level. Um, and what we're gonna do uh, for you guys is, I'm gonna give you a little bit of context. I know most of you, apart from Felix, are actually new to this process. So I'm gonna give you context on where, we're at, where we are at as a company and what, essentially why we're meeting today, like what the objective is, because this is not just about um, you know, running, running an exciting um, webinar, it's really about solving a key problem that, that we are currently facing. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna introduce the objective of this sprint and then what I'm gonna do here is we're all, all of us are gonna jump on Miro where we're actually gonna run the sprint itself. Cool. So, awesome, yeah, Mamad, we'll, we'll post links at the end for that. Great, so just to give you guys some um, context before we get started, if you want, I would suggest just writing a couple of notes maybe as, as we go here. This is not an exercise, just a couple of, of reminders 
as uh, as as I sort of mentioned, you know, key problems we're facing, etc. So everyone got a pen handy. Awesome. So just for a couple of minutes, I'm going to give you an introduction to where we're at, and as I said, the objective. Um, excellent. As I said, this is a real <laughs> this is a real business case. This is not. Um, you know, not, not just for fun. So I'm going to get really deep into sort of where we're at at the moment. So Product Mastery's mission for these guys who actually, you know, know about the business, not specifically. Our mission is really to empower product managers to build great innovative products. So the steps, we, we started this actually uh, right at the beginning of this year, off the back of a lot of research done last year. Steps we've taken so far to get where we are now is this really started as me running uh, product consultancy work as you know, freelance from consultant, mainly in Berlin. What we did um, then right at the beginning of this year is looked into building product management tools. So maybe even moving away from, we have project management tools like Jira and Trello, but saying, okay, well, what, what makes product management different? What are those, the aspects of that? How are we pulling in things like customer data, running retrospectives, one-on-ones, et cetera. Um, we decided, however, that it would be uh, it would be too long a journey to profitability. We're a bootstrap team. We want to stay small. We thought it would be too big an ask to start with that. So I think that's something further down the line, two three years. So instead, what we decided to do is focus on just simply validating like, our content and our message by selling some courses. So video video courses, sort of product management one hundred and one was the product we started with. So we sold um, you know, 10 to 20 of those courses to say, okay, great, we have something here that people are interested in. How do we now differentiate that and scale it? Right? So we don't want to be in the Udemy Coursera game. That's not really, you won't, we don't want to be selling courses for $10. Um, that's not the game we want to play. So what we've been working towards, well, up until two weeks ago was launching a, uh, a more unique differentiated tra training program where we combine um, things like mentorship with the theory of product management, but also actually building a product from scratch within that training program. Uh, because all the conversations we had, you know, I had conversations with 100 product managers uh, over the last two, three months. And a lot of common things are uh, because people have come into this into product management without without um, you know doing a degree for example a course they learn by doing learn by reading but feel slightly insecure in their position they don't you know they don't really know if they're doing the right thing second thing is that um a lot of people have done things like a scrum master course sorry a, a scrum certification so they have this sort of theory of project management but haven't actually applied product management speaking to users um you know, defining their own backlog rather than just executing on what the CEO or, or boss tells them to do. Um, so we have this sort of clear idea of where we want to be, let's say at the end of Q3. So looking sort of back end of summer, autumn, timeline obviously completely up in the air. But really what, we're, what we want to move towards is selling high ticket training programs to help product people, whether that's PMs, founders or project managers to build profitable early stage products within our program. Right? So you would actually like start and launch a product that is validated and can generate some revenue within this training program. So as I said, the plan before Corona, the Corona shutdown was to sort of sell a beta version of that to validate that uh, one, we have an offer that really resonates with our audience around this sort of path to profitability rather than just growth, uh, which is sort of what most other companies offer. Uh, two, that we can actually sell that training program in some form. Um, thirdly, that we can obviously, once we make the sale, really deliver on that um, promise of, of building a product that achieves profitability. Um, so this is why we call it pivot or persist. It's a topic of this webinar is, you know, it's not clear what the next step should be. And I think this is why it's great getting uh, your expertise and sort of outside help on this, is that we're sort of stuck in between, right? You know, do we push sales? Do we instead focus on something short term to retain customers, to generate some short term revenue? Um, do we instead just build a strong foundation for selling that high quality training program in future uh, when the economy recovers a bit, you know, looking three months down the line? 
Um, final thing is imp really important to note is, as I said, we are a bootstrap, like three person team. We want to stay that way, uh, but that means that we need to be very careful with the bets we place. So, you know, th we can only work on things that are high impact, low effort. Um, and related to that, luckily we have uh, personal income or we saw something bad coming, so have funds in place to sort of cover at least the next six months. So we're not urgently getting revenue, but we want to basically say, where, where can we be best placed in Q3, Q4 as a business? Um, okay, so that is it. We'll, we'll sort of cover that a little bit more in a second. So some final pointers before we jump in, and I'm gonna start screen sharing with everyone on the webinar is, when we move into this, um, the exercises, a couple of points. So don't worry about coming up with the perfect solution, right? We only have 60 minutes. We're trying to move quite quickly and we tidy up the little extras at the end. We're trying to move quickly, stay really focused. Second thing, as we write on the post-it notes, just try and be really clear and concise. We're not, we don't explain each idea. So you, we just get what is on the post-it note. So if it's a solution, make it super clear. Add you know, 30 words if you need to rather than five. Third thing, we are operating by a principle called working together but alone. So what that means is we're brainstorming but we are in silence, writing our own ideas, and then we actually vote on them in silence. So there's no discussion, there's no bias of someone being a good salesperson or a more likable person, and the introverted person you know, gets shouted out. It's about creating a very equal, opportunity to share our ideas. Um, final thing, if you find it a bit awkward in these silent exercises, just remind me to, I can put some music on in the background that hopefully won't mess with the audio system of the webinar, just to get our creative juices going. <laughs> uh, terrible joke. Great, so what I'm gonna do now is, everyone on the webinar, we are gonna jump into the Decision Jam itself. So I will screen share with you guys. Can everyone see the Miro board here? Let me just double check. Could someone write on the comments for me? You know what I'm gonna do, sorry. Should I miss it? Yeah, okay, awesome. Right, they can see us. Nice one. Now and again, I'm gonna pop back to the webinar comments, but I won't be able to see your comments for the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, I'll check in every five, 10 minutes on you guys. Excellent, so as I said, if everyone feels it's kind of Jesse, just follow my mouse up to the top left. Over here. Jesse, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I can see you over here, awesome. Okay, so as I said, broadly our objective is defining a product strategy for Q2 to Q3. Broadly setting a really strong long-term foundation for selling high profit products. We're gonna jump now into the first exercise. So just come over to column two. Now for everyone watching, just a note, I'm not introducing the guys to Miro in too much detail because they have used the tool before. What we do usually is say, just give an example of, of what they need to do. So for example, this exercise we're using post-it notes. To use those, just to recap for you guys, if you come down here, to use those post-it notes, we single click, we double click, start typing. And when the timer goes, say we have like six to eight uh, post-it notes there, we simply then single click and drag them down to the whiteboard below at the bottom where we have the note. Everyone clear? Did yep. a practice run yesterday, so we're all good on this. Excellent, so first exercise, what we're gonna do is, if we come down to the sailing boat at the bottom down here, Gonna spend a couple of minutes, uh, I'll set a timer for this, writing post-it notes for things that we think are giving the business, uh, putting wind in the sail, so positive things that are driving the business forward. So let's jump straight into that. So everyone go to your post-it note board. You've got your name at the top of it in black. And I am gonna set a timer and we're just gonna write as many ideas as possible. So we're gonna give it about two to three minutes here. Right, so I'm setting a timer, as many ideas as possible, it doesn't matter how crazy, about things that you think are driving the business forward. So ready, three, two, one, start.
the guys watching, I'm just gonna um, write a couple of these and then I'll show you sort of the other ideas and, and just talk you through a few tips if you are facilitating this kind of meeting. So personally, because I use design programs a lot, I'm a bit lazy. Um, Um, my guys, if the cards are a bit small, just you feel free to expand them when you put them on the, the board. Yeah, if you, as you go, it's a bit easier if you could drag your ideas down. Just so we can uh, speed things along a little bit. Just check on comments. Awesome. Mamad, yeah, we're just doing actually observation for this session. I will actually next week, or uh, two weeks time, try a, a session where we get um, you guys involved as well. Okay, so any any ideas? Um, also, don't worry, I know, Connor, Jesse, you're not intimate with the business, but, but anything you've observed, for example, would be super useful. Cool, so just 10 seconds left, any final ideas? I'm going to start just grouping these. Okay, awesome. So, what we're going to do is just leave these cards for today. Just leave the, the things that are giving us to putting wind in the sail. And what we're now going to do is I'm going to set another timer for three minutes. And we are going to put things, so same exercise, but things that are dragging the business back, right? So acting like an anchor. With these cards, I would like you to put them below the waterline. So you see our little boat here with the slightly conflicting um, swivel lines. So we're going to put the cards below the line. So I'm going to start a timer now for three minutes, as many ideas as possible for things that are holding the business back. Sorry, guys, watch them now. Just show you all the other cards. You can see what's um, what ideas are being put now. Just gonna make these really big so everyone can see them. So, guys, on the webinar, just any comments on? how I could facilitate this for you as observers, just let you know, sorry, let me know. Now I'll check the comments in a second. I'm just gonna expand these so you can see what's going on. Okay, so. Uh, Mike, um, my guys, I'm just gonna start grouping them, so, so don't worry if you see them moving. Mm. 
Okay, just uh, under a minute left for this. Okay, looks what we've done there. Just put your last card if you still have something on. Yeah. So, yeah, that's time. Awesome. So, uh, I'm just going to very quickly group anything that's not grouped yet. Yeah, if you could just expand some of these tiny cards. Okay, awesome. You've keep on the tiny cards. Awesome. Great. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to set a timer for four minutes. And if you see on the left, see all these red dots? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Again, you have your name. Sorry, I should have cut out the two guys that couldn't make it today. So again, on this, you've got, uh, sorry, you have four dots to vote. So what we're doing is just the things holding the business back below the line. You can place your four votes on the individual card you think is most uh, the, the most important thing to solve. If you want, you can put all four on one card if you feel really, really strongly. Um, if you want to spread them around, spread them around. Right, so you're moving the dots onto the cards you think are the biggest challenge for the business at the moment. So timer is starting. In two seconds, starting now. Read read the cards before, sorry, <laughs> really important. Read through the cards before, just take your time. We have four minutes, I'll give you, I'll give you a um, pointer when we, uh, sorry, when the time's nearly up. Awesome, thanks Deepak. So, where we are. so I'm just going to let you guys see what's going on in the board. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm going to pause to think of my own ideas for this. So one second, guys. I'm just going to move some of these. I think there's a sort of group over here. Sorry, Felix, just one second. I think these are near each other. Yeah, sorry, that's the final thing to do. Hmm. Please, sorry, I'm placing the final vote. Okay, awesome. So we have our voted things here. There's okay, sorry, there's a slight video lag, but otherwise we're good. I think that's Deepak's uh, internet quality. So what I'm gonna do now is take our so one second. Take our um, couple of these and just rewrite them. So what we're doing now is an exercise called how might we so no. What we do with the how might we is rather than saying like this is the problem like difficulty understanding what solution provide, we try and flip it into a challenge. So we say, for example, how might we make our solution more clear? 
that's a solution offer more clear. Let's look at the other highly voted one with three. So how might we um, validate our revenue model? Okay, so we're just going to focus today on the most voted how might we, which is this. It's any corrections that so different sorry the, the problem was difficulty understanding exactly what solution we provide so let's flip it to a challenge and say how might we make word well, i want to go beyond just things like add um you know more info on the website but actually define and validate a very clear solution that makes sense any quick comments from you guys so how might we define and validate a very clear solution? This is like the mechanism for validating a theoretical um, idea or the idea itself. As yeah, well and as this like is the difference. Idea. Maybe a solution for what? Could we be more specific? Yeah, let's, sorry, let me just think this through. Let's see the consequence of this. Define and validate a very clear solution. Um, So what we're saying is it's difficult to understand exactly what solution we provide. I think the framework is most important because we can always iterate on the idea itself. So let's just rephrase this. So define and validate a solution okay, let's focus on the solution today because I have we have the framework that we're, we're good at being lean yeah. and iterating quite quickly. Find a solution for helping helping product managers um, build great products really is the common theme we're looking for there. Sorry, usually a note there, usually we don't discuss so much because it's a small team and I know the guy It's a little bit more relaxed than we would do this if it was a client job. Great, so excellent. So what we're going to do now is, based on this specific challenge, so guys on Miro, if you yeah, move over to the third column. You're going to see some blue post-it notes. These are our solution post-it notes. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you five minutes to write as many solutions as possible, however out there, however stupid they sound. Don't worry about these other guys watching, uh, listening in. Um, whatever you think may help us uh, define a solution for, sorry, what is a good solution for helping product managers build great products? So I'm going to start the timer, same format as before, as many ideas as possible on the blue post-it notes. When you finish them, just drag them down anywhere on the whiteboard below. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so ready? Five minutes starting now. Just checking our webinar attendees. I've removed this up before. Um, guys on Miro, just to, if you can expand the solutions when you put them on the board, then the people observing can, can see this a little bit more clearly.
Any questions from the guys on the webinar, by the way, on the process so far? Any comments? Stop screen sharing for a couple of minutes just so you can. Guys, feel free to add comments, questions, and I will um, come back to review them in a minute. Two minutes left, everyone. That is a little bit too good. So I realise it's probably <laughs> awkwardly silent for everyone watching us come up with ideas, but hey, good to learn the process. It's better than listening to your music. <laughs> <laughs> Very good joke. Let me ask you a joke. Yeah, you liked my last playlist. I did. It, it was a song that I uh, that I, I really liked. You were playing the last time we did this. Yeah, there you go. See, I've got one one vote. It's got a farm. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to play it today because I think it, there's a high chance it's going to. Clash with the audio, yeah, a lot of feedback going across like three things. Um, awesome, any more ideas? Still got a minute left. Sorry, got 20 seconds left. Even looked at the timer. Who is Bob? Um, who's Bob Ross? Really weird. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought it was him. I thought it was him. Uh, There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. <laughs> anyone doesn't know who we're talking about then let me get, get a photo off of this guy <laughs> it's so good it's so good oh, anyway he's a legend distraction um okay great so what we're gonna do now yeah would be good if we <laughs> this is absolutely zero oh, God, it out. knowledge yeah, surely we can solve it. Four yeah. of us in a room. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting on our sofas. Uh, anyway, um, great. So what we're going to do now is similar with the problem. We are going to be, uh, I'm just going to move the how might we down so that we keep that top of mind as we're working on this. So what we are going to, sorry, Connor, I'm just going to move your the idea you're editing. I'm just going to put the how might we up here at the top. Um, and I'm going to move some of these guys over to the right. I'm just going to keep the left side clear. As things start getting voted on, just to give you guys in the background um, some context, what we'll start do what I'll start doing is building a pyramid. So most voted ideas, you start sort of get, just separating them to get a clear picture of, of what the direction is, um, so I can start planning the step ahead. So how might we up here? So remembering that our challenge is. How might we define a solution for helping product managers build great products? We've come up with lots of solution ideas. What we're now gonna do is vote on, and I'm actually gonna give you guys four votes for this because we don't have a, too many cards, is you are gonna vote on the solution you think, right, so you think based on you know expertise, background, op pure opinion, uh, you think is the most effective at Solving our challenge. Right, so you have four votes. Timer for five minutes is starting again now. Then, okay, guys, on the webinar, any questions you have, feel free to post. Like, why are we doing stuff in a certain way? Um, 
why are we working silence these kinds of things feel free to post and i will i'll get back to them sorry i'll, I'll, I'll cover your questions uh we'll also have we're going to finish early so um in about five ten minutes so that means we can cover some questions as well so if you want to wait to the end completely fine right sorry i'm going to start voting i'm also just going to zoom in on this for you guys so you can see what everyone is thinking so i'm just going to put my face right to the camera and see what's going on if you think ideas are very very similar um, guys in Miro, just feel, put them right next to the, sorry, put the two that are similar right next to each other, just slightly overlapping, and we can, um, you know, either decide to vote on the group or on the individual, we can see what's going on with it. Sorry, I'm going to move your dots over as well over here, so it's a bit easier. All right, what do we got? minute and a half left i'm just going to go to the webinar see that everyone's still going joe deepak anyone else that's still with us can you still hear still see i sort of want to give bob ross a vote <laughs> we, we help you how would you yeah. Not like Bob Ross. Clips everything. <laughs> it's so good. The webinar people looking at our mirror board, or are they just looking at your face? No, no, they're looking at the mirror board. How else would they know what's going on? <laughs> Ask them to throw a load of ideas in the comments as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually. All right, keep Bob. Has he died? I didn't even know. Shit. Guys, if you want, yeah, we have time. Um, do you want to add? How do we do this? Everybody that's watching has one vote. If they want to vote, just write the first three words of the card you want to vote on. Wait, how about you let them only vote on ones that already have dots? Simplify it. We'll just give them a number each. I like it. Yeah, sorry, I should have done that before, but I haven't run something like this before. Um, great idea. So, 
Guys, every card that you can see with a vote, sorry, with a dot, you have one vote. Just write the first three words, let's double check that one, yeah, write the first three words of the card and I will um, place that dot for you. So whilst I create the dots, Jesse, it's your use of the design program. Do you want just creating 20 dots for me on the left? No problem. Danke. Put the name on each dot so we don't get confused or something. Do them you change the color to like green or something? Yeah, but even within them, like you, I, I know if I was doing this, I'd struggle with uh, knowing who I've actually signed if you get like 10 answers at once. I guess you can just wait and do it chronologically. It's fine, yeah, actually. I'm just going to exactly. Let's see how many people are spending. Yeah. Spam those cards. Yeah, good idea. So, what, yeah, what I'm going to do. Um, Connor, Felix, Jesse, do you mind expanding all the cards with dots on? Make sure you're not both editing the same one. And we're going to move yep. the non-voted yep. ones off the board for now. You're going to have to stay quite still so everyone in the webinar can see and read the yeah. answers. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, um, let's, let's just put them in descending. Keep the dots. Watch. Oh, don't do it. Just, uh, Connie, you, you grab a group. Actually, I'll, I'll do it, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, just, dots. Is that enough? Perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Um, Felix, Connor, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm going to stop touching things. Non designers can't trust <laughs> me. <anything. laughs> wow. <laughs> That's like titleism. Well, I mean, to be fair, this is a design program. They're basically all the same, whatever people say that different. Oops, shit. Oh. Okay, I'm zoomed in as quick as possible. So guys, I'm gonna give you two minutes. Everyone has two minutes to add their votes. I'm gonna keep this up for another one, sorry, one more minute, and then I will transfer your votes across. That's a good idea, Connor. Next time I'm gonna do, I mean, this is our first version of this, and it'd be cool to um, let people participate. You can actually get 20 people in this Miro like decision plan. Yeah. If you. Um... The thing you can't do is let everyone create uh, solutions or it becomes oh, yeah. slightly unmanageable. Uh, Up to eight people is okay. Yeah. I think what's good about that idea is you can start with the sort of standard mechanisms for doing it like this, which are already very good, and then. Yeah, you end up being like experts at them and like changing this format around and making them an error and a half. Or yeah, you can. Also, companies are shy to it. I mean, if they're voting in the chat, why don't we just number the notes like this too? Yeah, let me. Okay, so I'm going to pass a few across. Okay. So, um, so sorry. Let me just make sure I've got the right side. Okay, great. So. Sam Robinson is voting for Corona Product Community. We might have removed that one. Is it still there? Jesse, do you mind doing the dots for me? Yeah, we're already on it. Nice. Ah, sorry. Yeah, that was crazy. I don't know how people are voting, but I just thought they could just say in the chat which one they picked by the number, and then the dots can be moved. Yeah, yeah, guys. Sorry, sorry. I should have planned this before. Yeah, could you? Sorry, could you do that again? So I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Just write the single number. In the webinar, we um, it needs to be uh, zoomed in on the yeah. There you go. Hey, don't worry. I've, I've made sure I've, I've been uh, visible on this. Cool. So just ten seconds to do your vote. Sorry, Jesse, I jumped in. So quickly label. Uh, ten seconds to vote, and then I'm going to transfer your dots across. Actually, Jesse, do you mind doing me a favour and just add a dot when I read out the number? No worries. Awesome. Nice one. Right. Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, Deepak, you got two. Only one vote. Only one vote. So we've got, sorry, Hugo has said number two. Massie has said number five. Sorry, pronunciation. Deepak, number six. Any more votes? Any more before we close? 
so I've got Joe up here as well, who, who did number six. Sam Robinson, also number six, interestingly. Community like the community. Interesting, yeah, very interesting. Um, that's it, any more votes, any more votes coming through? Ah, number two from Antonio, thanks for that. Oh God, this is really difficult now. We've done, we've got five, we've got three fives. So, um, Usually this is a good context for you guys. So usually what we do is if, if this would be like a client sprint, then you'd have one decider. So the person that organized the sprint or the most senior person. So in this case, I'm gonna take the liberty of taking a decider vote. We have three on five. I'm gonna just very briefly talk through why I'm gonna vote for one. Let's see if we've got a final vote from the audience though. Antonio, are you changing from two to one? <laughs> If so, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> that solves that. I with that. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, let, let's let's go with that. Again, you know what the, the key, the beauty of this is it doesn't matter. What we're gonna do is focus on one solution, but we're gonna iterate and try these three. We're very likely to just try one, see if it works, try the second, see if it works, try the third, see if it works. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to obsess over the detail. Great, so we have a winner. We have a winner, solution number one. Specialize in helping companies design product roadmap. Primarily, this would take the form of facilitating sessions like this, it can be marketed via sessions like this, could be for an entire roadmap or helping a single team or you know, helping a company pivot, et cetera. Can iteratively improve the sessions themselves over time and become the world's experts in sort of extracting great ideas from people. Um, we're going to focus on, sorry, we're actually going to take all three though. We're going to vote on all three and we're going to focus on one. So what we're going to do now is prioritize this using an effort impact scale. So if we all come down here, everyone can see. So see the impact, effort impact scale. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take the, so we've got the three most voted solutions. I'm going to take the most voted and place it on the graph and without much conversation. I'm gonna ask you guys whether we should move it um, lower effort, higher effort, and then higher impact, lower effort. So we start prioritizing these solutions. First one, specializing in helping companies design, um, sorry, let me move these to the back. I don't know why that's happened. What are we defining as effort? Effort to validate. Effort for it to work really, to get an outcome. Efforts, no, you're right, effort to, effort to validate, to see that yeah. this is working, yes. So, so this one on sort of specializing in helping companies design product roadmaps. Low effort, high effort? Just say left, right. Um, ish. Upper right. Effort, we're on the effort, the x-axis only at the moment. I would go to the right. You'd go right? We're talking about yeah. validation here, so simply putting the offer out there. I put it far left, actually. Yeah, I think this is really easy to validate. Like it's, it's effort to run a landing page and reaching out to maybe 50 people to see what the interest is. No. Jesse, like, any push, pushback? a lot of effort, but that'll also be like validated in, in and of itself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the work itself, right, yeah. Um, it's like, yes, it's so, like if you're looking at software, like, I mean, software is, is low effort in the long term, but high effort at the start. But if we're just talking about validation, then this yeah. is definitely low effort, I think. Yeah, which we are, because we're, you know, we're basically treating it as a clean slate. Yeah, let's leave it about, let's leave it even lower. Sorry, low, quite low effort. Yeah, I agree with you there. Second card we've got is specializing in profit, profit driven products. I'm going to give just a very, very brief, um, view on this just from like sort of having tried to work in this space it's um coming in and working with individual companies is super difficult to obviously have like a fixed framework you can use here can be developed but maybe more effort than than um we may be able to like validate it but not deliver let's say on it yeah if we're coming I think, in a consultant I think, it's a lot of effort. I think there's a lot of i think that's something that you could get into over time, or like, I think there's a huge amount of effort to understand 
like no. what will be involved in it's the, basically the developing a framework that. you could reuse it's, 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 it's a complex value proposition yeah yeah so let's, yeah. Leave it, let's leave it about here for now and finally for effort um let's take the last idea and then we're going to move on to the impact side of things so let's talk about effort for the corona product community which is popular with our community, interestingly enough. Uh, so using your product community to specialize in actions, ideas that companies have trying these days, how they've worked. Um, high effort, low effort? Low, I think low. Connor, thoughts? I would say it's between the two of them. Okay. It, like, a lot of it depends on how yeah, you yeah, yeah. make Let's, yeah, let's leave it there for now. It's completely fine. Great. Let's move to impact scale. Um, first one: high impact, low impact. Uh, I mean, if it's validated, it's it's high impact because it gives people, you know, a structure, a framework to to help them move forward. And, yeah, I mean, it's um, also the the most common issue with product managers from a survey of 150 people we did was prioritization. I think there are underlying problems with that, but this, the pitch is, is easy if we, if we say, you know, we help you prioritize effectively. Are we happy with that? I don't want to push just my opinion on that. Guys working yeah. product, Jesse, like, your thoughts? Impact is always harder because it's like, if you could deterministically know that something's going to have high impact. Well, what do we, what do we assume if it worked? Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it works, it's high impact. Oh. Let's take the second one, Corona product community. So remember, we're talking long term here. You're at the yeah. percent objective I, is Q3, Q4. I would say that, that that's conveniently about um, just, I mean, just above the, the line for low. For, for, yeah, for I'd, low I'd, agree. Effort. I'd agree. Because it's not really a solution. It's like it's general information. It's building community and gathering yeah. information, but it's yeah, not actually a solution. Yeah. Great. Final one, specializing product-driven products. We said high effort. If it worked, it would be ridiculously high. It would be the highest impact. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, okay, awesome. So let's focus just today on our sweet spot here, which is high impact, low effort. So what we're now gonna do is, is focus in on this solution to, so our team will now go away and sort of test this first. To make sure stuff actually happens, what I'm gonna do now is move this over to the final board. So if you go far right, top, top right, um, then I'm going to put this, the solution that we've zoomed in on is high impact, low effort. What do we think could be good action steps here? Um, so I think like there's the obvious one of reaching out to a million companies and hoping for the best by whatever mechanism you think is best. I do think more of like this style thing or kind of offering this say for free um or like little things like this to show that you're not just a random spoofer you might give me a load of money to spend top shit well i i would say I would, as a starting point i would say um we could actually you know do a roadmap for uh, for ourselves or, or for another company um and in another webinar i think that would be a good start yeah i like that yeah so, um, uh, Felix, trying to track down, or shall I do that? How could we use your time effectively next week? Um, is this, this is for me, is it? Well, I'm just, no, you know what, I'm, I'll, I'll take that one as well. So, to run a um, workshop with one client for free. Essentially run a, yeah, essentially run a free workshop with a client. Okay, okay. Um, and, so I'm just highlighting the important parts. I think a good action step as well, Felix, and on your side would be user research. So could we, you know, aim to have 20 conversations with product managers or, you know, heads of product, CEOs and smaller companies to understand like what is the main challenge you, you guys are currently facing? Yeah. Uh, have you been able to pivot? Yeah. And maybe, uh, I mean, I guess one of the things about uh, having a roadmap and being, having a, you know, confidence in your roadmap is uh, is uncertainty. And so, I mean, finding out if um, uh, having this kind of secure, defined roadmap is going to help um, uh, is going to be something quite valuable. But, I mean, just posing that question to, to our current network would be, um, 
be something that could have a lot of impact. Yeah, exactly. So we could even, you know, we can have conversations, but also part of that um, um, survey results, really, or let's say survey feedback, let's call it that. Understand product team pain points by Friday, 10th to April. Great. Uh, I'm happy with that. Any other key action points? Are we happy with the three to start? Remember, this is iterative, so we'll come back and revisit these. Random articles um, based on, like, you know, pivoting in Corona times yeah, yeah, or yeah. things yeah, like that. Yeah, so you can read your workshop and, and um, you know, free quality content. Sorry? Gain some endorsements from some product managers who run similar methods or you can recommend a methodology. Yes, yeah, the conversation maybe, like another, yeah, like um, and maybe another Q&A with, um, with right. someone that we can share or run um, with other people who are using this kind of yeah, uh, yeah. this methodology. Yeah, validate the framework. Basically, uh, to share. Sort of interactive testimonial, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, yeah, so to... Create uh, interactive testimonials with other product the other product people. Let's say. Uh, I mean, that is action four is a sort of bonus one as well. So we stay focused on these three. Also, I'm just going to check everyone can still hear. All good. Nice. So, what we've done in we had a little bit of extra time at the beginning, just sort of introduce everything. But what we've really done in about 50 minutes is stated a very clear objective, in our case, sort of product strategy for most of this year. We have then uh, delved into the myriad problems that are facing us and looked at, you know, what is the most important thing there? And we decided that it's really sort of defining a clear solution for helping product managers build great products. What we then did is brainstorm some solutions for that. And we have three of them here. Sorry, we have lots of them, but we have three most voted that we have put on a high impact, sorry, an, an effort impact matrix to say what's actually worth, what's worth pursuing, what is feasible in pursuing. What we've then done is focused on the lowest effort, highest impact, which is really specialized in helping companies design product roadmaps. Um, and we have now put action points to actually make sure shit happens, right? We put ideas into practice, we make those ideas happen. What we will then be doing is our team, just for everyone listening, is um, either, well, Felix and myself are working on this full time, but we'll now organize a check-in sprint, an iteration sprint, maybe in a month, um, to say, present the learnings and then work out what do we do next from that. Uh, because our team moves very quickly, before that month is up, we, we may meet early or we may just decide to say, we try the first solution, we see whether it works or not as quickly as possible, ideally by the end of next week even. And then if it's working, we persist with it. If it's not working and we don't think it's worth committing more resources, we would pivot to solution number two, which is what the crowd really wants, is the Corona product management, sorry, the Corona product community and see what we could do then. Um, or even we say, actually, let's just put all in on this high impact, potentially high impact, but high effort, um, one about uh, building a process for profit-driven products. Awesome. So if anyone wants to stick around for a couple of questions, then I'm going to stop screen sharing. I will share this link with everyone that attended the webinar, so you can check it out if you want. And um, any questions from you guys listening, if you're still uh, awake after an hour and just sitting quite quietly in the background. Let me see what I've got. There's a couple of questions I saw earlier. So, yeah, we've got one from Antonio. So what difference do you see between involving the team on the creation of the Helmut Wies and then vote for the one that would be the focus against rephrasing, sorry, and then vote for the focus. So the question is around, do we get everyone to write these? I, so remember I asked you guys just to write the sort of things going well, things not going well. For more experienced teams, we can jump straight into writing how might we, so immediately just banging out challenges in one session rather than splitting it with things like pushing us forward, things uh, holding us back. Um, 
I think, Antonio, I think it's a question of experience. So on Friday, I ran a sprint with a guy who is, he's been a sprint facilitator for like six, seven years. I'm working with him on some strategy stuff. We just jumped straight into how might we use, and it, the process that took us 15 minutes here took that group five minutes. So I think it's a question of experience and really understanding a bit of design thinking and having experience with design sprints. Um, second question. It's my name, I'm in my vote special. Sorry, that's a vote. Yeah, interesting thought there from Hugo. Uh, he, he was going to vote for sort of specializing in profit because a lot of product managers come from a non business background. Completely agree. And I think that's actually one of the reasons why we, we had that idea about a product driven course, sorry, profit driven course before. Um, awesome. So, if there's no more questions, then what I'm gonna do is just send a replay out of this webinar. What you can do is use that as reference for yourself if you ever wanna run workshops in your own company. Um, I'm also gonna give you the Miro board so you can copy it. And, and again, you have everything there. You have the Miro board, you have a framework for running it. I will send you also a tutorial on how to run Lightning Decision Jams. So final, um, wrapping that up then. So final ask really is, I think if you're you know interested in the solution we came out with. If you want us, you want to have a conversation with us about, you know, maybe issues you're currently facing. Even better if it's related to prioritization and defining roadmap. Uh, Hugo, I'll come to your question yeah, in a second. Then uh, just get in touch with me. Just respond to the email we send out tomorrow. And yeah, any questions? Any final things from you, Jesse, Connor, Felix? How did you find the process? Did you think this is something that you would want to use in your companies? Yeah, I have I have one. Uh, I mean, I think I mean I think it's very engaging and it gives everybody a voice. Like you say, there's no kind of um, uh, it doesn't favour one person as the as the ringleader. And I, I think the kind of voting with the dots is like really important. Yeah, I think what I think what would be great would be if, if there was a kind of uh, um, a sort of Reddit function within something like Miro where you could upvote or downvote instead of using okay, a good tool. <laughs> Maybe we pivot. <laughs> uh, <technically. laughs> um, yeah, you know what though? I, th I think what we can do next time is incorporate the audience much better. Uh, I, I didn't, yeah, I, I thought I wanted to keep it simple this first one, but I think next time we can definitely, definitely work out a way. And we perhaps, we, perhaps we could try doing one that isn't actually using uh, the webinar side and we just log everybody into Miro. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking that. And you cool. have maybe six people that write the ideas and then everyone else can vote. Yeah, yeah. we're going to say next time you can have community counting as maybe one person. Instead of Henry, you putting any of your ideas, you just sort of monitor the comments. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, posted notes. And the other cool thing is if we run it as a hack, we can run it on the topic we're studying at the moment, prioritization, and uh, mm -hmm. basically crowdsource ideas and then you know work out very quickly what what the biggest challenges are for people um your great solution is that you just get um companies like product and then you group like you, you you do a huge uh huge brainstorming with anyone who wants to join along yeah you, exactly yeah, yeah i think she works quite well awesome so i'm just gonna wrap up with hugo's question and then um sorry yeah jesse if you want to add to that as well after so Hugo says, how do you usually define impact when doing the estimation chart? I mean, this is this is a big question. I mean, so personally, I think it is, you can't separate, uh, Connor and I were talking about this last week. If we are talking about impact, it has to ultimately come down to uh, be linked to revenue in some way. So in our case, and maybe I should have made this very clear, it is about saying, considering our um, constraints, which are that we're, you know, we don't need to drive revenue urgently. We sort of have six months to do that. Um, and considering we're really looking long term, which I think all companies should do, usually they can't because of investment goals. Then for me, it is about, okay, what is going to have a good long term impact? Now, because we defined it quite clearly at the beginning, um, I assumed we had that in mind, but actually, it's a really good point to convey that clearly next time. So I think impact should always be on revenue. As soon as we start uh, siloing those things and say we're just focusing on like driving, uh, you know, visitors to a website or retention, then they're essentially can easily become vanity metrics like website visitors, um, or we can be working on a metric that's not actually contributing to our ultimate goal, which is building a great product that customers want to use and that will generate revenue for the business so that we can keep 
providing value to them. Uh, but really, yeah, really, really good question. I think impact is not, yeah, it's in this obsession with growth, as Connor and I have talked about a lot, um, it's wrong, in my opinion, to focus on, um, you know, things that are not generating revenue because at the end of the day, the business needs money to survive. And the only reason we're in this situation anyway with companies, um, you know, basically we have this investment model where companies get to push, kick the question down the road of revenue generation. <laughs> and some can't actually confront it when the time comes to need to make money. Um, awesome, so any anything else to add from you guys before we close this down? I would just add, um, we do a similar retrospective at my company every two weeks and it's yeah. almost the exact same format. Since we're all in the same room, we don't use Miro, um, we yeah. use our own tool, but, but um, it's a, what we find typically is that the things that are discussed in this format do get done, or at the very least, there really is tangible improvement on the things that are pointed out. Yeah. But it does depend on having uh, typically one uh, really strong uh, moderator who yeah. sets the pace. I think it's the pacing that's the most important part. Yeah, definitely. I think accountability um, afterwards is, um, it's good to have somebody in place to really make sure that um, the points are covered, the, the final actions at the end are, are being seen to by yeah, the teams. Yeah, definitely. I think in our case it's easier, but I think if we're doing this with clients, it's about um, yeah making that crystal clear in the end of the meeting, like who's accountable yeah. when, what are they doing, and then following yeah. up on that as well, the day after and then two weeks after as well. Awesome. Uh, let's wrap up there then. So thanks, everyone, for watching, and uh, thanks, guys, for being involved with this. Uh, hopefully see you in person after the <laughs> quarantining. Thanks so much. Uh, and also we'll be sending this out tomorrow so you can share it with anyone you think it will be relevant for. Cheers.